Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest is the CEO and founder of a startup that empowers people to get camping and outdoors by making the know-how accessible to everyone. Please welcome the CEO and founder of Friday Outdoors, Lestea Malloy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Lestea. How are we doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. I've uh, definitely listened to a few of your episodes, so it's such an honor to be here. So I'm so first and foremost, we met at Pi, uh, the Portland Nikki Baker experience. That was the first time we met. But but you, what you're doing is actually very innovative because you're really trying to encourage people and to think and and. Truly, I've actually used your app and it's kind of helped me from the camping perspective. So before I spill too many of the beans, tell us. What is, what is it? What is you doing? Yeah. So I'm the founder of Friday Outdoors. We're empowering people to get out camping and really just be able to feel that joy, confidence, and freedom early on. So we focus a lot on how do we make the know-how accessible from anywhere. Now, why, why this app? What, what, what is it we, we were trying to Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is diversifying outdoors. Uh, there's, you know, so much beauty and being out there but yet there's very much a lack of representation in the outdoor industry but then also outdoor participation so our biggest why is really helping more of us to kind of take up space and really get the benefits that can can benefit all of us um in terms of building it education outdoor education into a mobile app uh, there's a lot of uh, classes and campouts that you can go to to get training. Uh, but then once those trainings are done, what we found is folks are like, okay, can I bring that instructor with me camping all the time? <laughs> or uh, how do I really build these skills so I feel confident going on my own? And by going on my own, it also means going with other folks as well. But how do we go from that in-person learning to something that can be a bit more self-paced and much more flexible to people in the moments that they need to have those skills the most. And that's when they're planning for the trip from home. And that's when they're actually out camping where there's very little, if any, cell phone service. Right. And so folks, what we're talking about is the Friday Outdoors app. Now, did I pre- uh, pronounce that correctly? You sure did. Perfect. So now this, what this app really does, it, it does kind of give you like, you know, a packing list, camping skills, camping meals, you know, things to think about. In fact, I'll give you a great example. One of the first times my wife and I went camping, we thought it'd be a great idea to cook steaks over the campfire, which in essence sounds really cool until you do it. And then you realize like you brought paper plates and you can't cut the steak because you didn't really have steak knives. And it's like, wow, okay, this is probably not the smartest idea. However, you can do that. Um, One thing I would highly recommend is cutting up the steaks beforehand, having it sit in a marinade, and then you can cook it so they're kind of in, you know, steak bites. But, you know, those, there's these little things that you just don't think about. Um, Now, why did, why was it so important for you to start this up? I, and I love that example you shared. Uh, so uh, just a heads up, we will be addressing that whole cooking over the campfire. So <laughs> get ready for that. Uh, I would say growing up, I had never been camping before. I didn't really consider myself outdoorsy. And it wasn't really until later on, uh, my parents had passed away. I was moving in with family and then I was introduced to hiking. And for me, like hiking was a way to heal and just really uh, get into something uh, that could help me be in my thoughts, right? And try something new. And over the years of hiking, I was like, oh, what's this camping thing, right? Because you don't, 
it's not something that I even thought about doing, but um, after seeing, after hiking a lot, I would see these tents at, because a lot of these trails were at campgrounds and I got curious. And for me, I was just like, this is something that is so enjoyable. Cause I tell you on my first camping trip, I fell in love with it. <laughs> and it's just like, I would not have been able to go out there if I didn't have a some courage, but then also some experience uh, just being out there to start with. And so I, I think it's been over time, like kind of a gradual thought process of, okay, I love camping. How do I get more people into it? So my friends will tell you, um, I, I plan, I gotten a lot of people into camping and continued continue to do that but I was like how do I do this on a larger scale right how do we reach people who can definitely benefit from camping and being outdoors um I don't think it should be reliant on having a person to take you if you want to go for it go for it and uh that is really who we're designing the Friday Outdoors app for that's what it, that's really what it was. It was like over an overtime piece. I love it. Now, what would you say is like some of the most common mistakes that people make, you know, when they're planning to go camping or, or things that they forget to do? Oh, yes. Yeah. So we talked to a lot of people. Uh, and quite honestly, um, one is building a campfire. Um, actually, the moment of inspiration for Friday Outdoors app specifically was in seeing um, an Asian family. Uh, they, they were first timers out there. It was getting dark. They were trying to build their campfire and just did not know how to do it. So we offered them help, <laughs> obviously, in that moment. But afterwards, I was like, hmm, what, what's this? So that, kept, that was a reoccurring theme um, because there's no way to really practice those skills when you're at home. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Um, but then the other, a couple of other two I'd mention is being warm while you're camping uh, because it's just a different way of layering your clothes than you would for going out, you know, out socializing in a restaurant, right? Um, when you're camping, you really need to be thinking about each of your layers and how to stay warm. And if you're warm, you're all good, right? Yep. <laughs> um, yep. And then the other thing I'll mention is sleeping. Uh, I think a lot of folks, even if they work up the courage to go camping, um, how do I get a good night's sleep when I'm out there? And based on having these conversations and these reoccurring themes um, from our research, but then also from direct observation and personal experience, I was like, okay, we, we can address these so people don't have to have these experiences, right? We, we want them to have an amazing experience the first time. So learn, learn, from, uh, learn from, from others. Yes, definitely. I will admit, folks, I got to tell you, I would much rather be in like a freezing cold area knowing that I can put on additional layers than somewhere hot because I know I can only get naked and that's as far as I can go and it's going to still be hot no matter how much I take off. So now, now, <laughs> now what do you thought? That is, that is important. That's an important uh, thing. We talk about that, those conditions as well and what to do to stay cool. <laughs> I love it. And, and one of the things you mentioned too earlier was food. Let's talk about like food preparation, what things should people be taking and, and what should they be preparing for? Yeah. So anything you cook at home, you can cook it out camping. The main twist um, I recommend to folks is just to simplify what simplify what you're doing. So if normally it's 10 ingredients, pick the five ingredients that it really takes to um, use those. Um, and I think some people do like to have ideas. Uh, camping meals is one of our top subjects that people come looking. Uh, so that was a surprise to me that it would be such a favorite, but it really has been. Um, and so we give folks, like, if you don't cook at home, for example, like chances are you're not gonna wanna cook when you're camping. So we give folks um, camping food that either requires no cooking or oh, nice. just like add water, right? Um, and then for folks you like cooking, well, you probably like it out there too. So then we give people just the things that they'll need, like a camp stove and, um, utensils, all, all that good stuff. Um, but a lot of it is things you can just take, bring from your, from your home and 
within 10, 15 minutes have the most delicious meal out when you're camping. So yeah, I'm definitely the, uh, just add water. I'm, I'm kind of notorious for burning water, which is quite impossible to do when I'm cooking. <laughs> You're not alone in that, quite honestly. There's a lot of people who get nervous with um, even like putting in the propane into the camp stove, right? Uh, yeah. And so these are things that we definitely um, are covering in, in our app. So. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, my barbecue cooking skills just don't translate very well into the kitchen. <laughs> so I can, I, I can get on the trigger and, and be fine. But in the kitchen, it just all seems to fall apart for me. <laughs> I'm going to need some recipes from you then. For Oh man. Yes. I got, I got the trigger on luck. Yeah, please. We'll, we'll talk more about that for sure. Now, now let's talk about, you've kind of talked about clothing a little bit, but what about all the other things that like you know, personal hygiene while you're out there. What are the things that people should be taking with them? Yes. So for hygiene, um, if you're new to camping, I definitely recommend going to uh, campgrounds that have showers. And surprisingly, the best shower pressure, hot, like you can have that uh, dreamy shower when you're camping. So then it's really about bringing exactly what you'd bring for traveling to like a hotel, but you're bringing it camping. So that's your toothbrush, your toothpaste, um your shampoo uh but it is helpful to have like biodegradable shampoos if you're have an outdoor shower That's- oh nice yeah smart um uh, and then also um for hygiene um always bring toilet paper <laughs> like it's not the <laughs> sexiest topic but uh <laughs> i will say oregon state parks washington state parks are amazing uh but you never know when they're gonna run out of toilet paper because uh that just happens so always bring that and uh hand sanitizer those would be the things um and then for the ladies um always carrying uh you know you never know when you get your period always keeping a tampon a pad in that toilet toiletry bag is helpful yeah, and, and and some some more some like a waterproof you know type of bag too because you certainly don't want those items to get wet and sometimes it does get cold at night and you know there's there's the unique thing about camping that's so fun is there's like layers to it right like you can go to like a KOA campground which has a shower and probably like a a pool for the kids and maybe an arcade and things of that nature. Or you can go just completely desolate out in the middle of like, you know, a state park and you're going to dig a hole to go to the restroom kind of thing. And it's and you really do have all of those options here in the Pacific Northwest. Like every all of those are like 30 minutes to an hour. Away. That is resonates so strongly because it's so common to see um, camping as something that's about survival skills. Like you're having to hike up a mountain and carry everything on your back to get to this peak. But camping can be, you know, rolling up to a campground, get a spot right on the lake, right, and have amenities like the bathrooms and the showers and uh, potable water, which is um, so, you, so you can have just drinking water access right there. Um, you can have that experience and still it, that is very much camping. Um, I do a lot of that. Um but what it allows is to have this outdoor home that is so magical, right? And then I can wake up, go hiking on the trails. I can go do all these things. And then sure, there's times where I want maybe a different experience, a little more remote, um, like a hike in sight. Um, or I'll go backpacking in the Malawas, right? There's just so many options for folks. Um, so I love that you mentioned that. And um, even for folks who aren't ready to get into sleeping in a tent, you know, without the four walls. Um, I also even recommend checking out um, state parks, which have a cabin and it's like a one room cabin, but it has electricity um, or a yurt, right? So that just yep, yep. like camp the way you want, find the stuff yeah. that works for you, what fills your cup, like that's what it's about. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the most important thing is just kind of getting out there and enjoying the outdoors, uh, being comfortable with, uh, to your point, you know, putting on the propane tank or and if you do start a fire, knowing the safety precautions to make sure that fire is actually uh, extinguished before you leave the campground is also very important things. Now, now let's transition a little bit over to the business. I want to talk about the business. Let's talk about business. So, Tell me, how, how did you build an yeah, app? Yeah, well, you, build you know, app? I had come from the tech industry, um, over 10 years experience in tech. 
uh, as a product manager and a user experience researcher. So it was very natural for me to say, okay, here's the vision, here are the use cases that people need and want what we're building. Uh, but then it was like, okay, how do I, what's the next step to actually build this? And uh, there, are, and so we decided to go again with a mobile app. We wanted to be able to be on both OSs from the get go, right? So iOS and Android. Um, and so we were able to build in-house and over some time um, to get out there. And we just started with, let's build an MVP, right? Like all the apps that are commonly on people's phones, they did not start that way, right? There's always a, um, you know, the scrappy, scrappy testing, right? To see people who want what you're building, getting feedback early on. And then there's that, uh, the next stages of building out your beta, your MVPs, your pilots, right? Like that was exactly what we did to start out. So that way we weren't saying, hey, we need to go build the, build uh, something with all these features to start. It's like, no, like let's build for the core that ideal person who wants to go out camping and they just need the resources. So for us, that was our compass. And then let's build it out gradually. Um, so that's that's what it's been for us. And in fact, we didn't even start with our app first. We start with a website just to start garnering um, interest in uh, outdoor education that's accessible to people. And then by adding the app, um, we were able to then make it offline, which was really what distinguished us from other options. Yeah, that's great. And you know, folks, a few things that were mentioned there, MVP and beta. So first let's minimal viable product, right? And so let's think about like when Nike, uh, for formerly Blue Ribbon Sports, their MVP was a shoe. Right. That was their minimal viable product. Right. And then their beta was like, hey, let's actually use this waffle iron to create a different kind of bottoms and have prefontaine run around the track. Right. So then they were testing out the shoe so that when people are talking about MVP, they're just talking about the the basic, the basic, just getting the product out there first and foremost. What is that product? Right. And then now let's put some bells and whistles to it and see what actually works and what doesn't work. And that's that's truly what a lot of these companies are going through. And, and you know, you, you mentioned it. A lot of these apps uh, that we see today did not start out though. In fact, Twitter, uh, or from now X, right, was actually a podcast hosting station uh, before it became this social media site. Uh, and the reason it became a social media site is because the podcasters and the folks that were using it were using this communication tool known as Twitter that became very useful and valuable. And they realized that, hey, this MVP of the podcast hosting was actually not the really what they needed and they trans they pivoted over to you know twitter and created the social media site and now elon musk is a billionaire i'm not sure how that all came about but it sure did right <laughs> and it just came full circle absolutely but, yeah so for us it was uh very much let's uh, build test it iterate right um that way we're always building with feedback from people who are actually using the app early on and really focus on quality over quantity. So we always, we always get a lot of uh, just beautiful feedback from folks um, who see that as part of our design. And, you know, you mentioned you testing it, getting some feedback. How, what mediums do you use? How do you do that? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of ways. Um, it's always like meeting people where they're at. Uh, so we've gotten, we've did interviews early on. We did surveys. Um, we went to festivals where they would, maybe it wasn't exactly camping, but it was even just outdoor related and, and uh, talk to people about what are the aspects of camping that um, they're looking to learn, or if they hadn't been camping, um, what is it that kind of holding them back, but yet still inspiring them to, to like even be interested in it. Right. And so uh, we re really did a lot of different, um, use different methods in order to get feedback, depending on like where we're at in the design process. Nice. Now, how did you, how did you go about building this brand? Like, you know, so now you're getting folks to hear about it. How do you build a, yeah. an, a brand that's well, an app? I mean, like anything, we could talk about the, 
here's our app and here are the features, right? right but right. that's not inspiring, right? Like saying you can navigate or <laughs> saying, uh, right, this is the size of the app on your phone. No, like that's not what's going to convince someone to go, you know, nap, uh, go camping outside, like no. So for, for us, the biggest thing was we are designing for people who aren't identifying as outdoorsy to begin with, or maybe they've done some outdoor activities, but camping is new to them, right? Or or maybe they just had a little bit experience. So for us, that traditional approach of you're an outdoor brand, let me go show someone climbing a mountain. Like that was not going to be our, our branding. Our branding was going to be, hey, you're looking to get more connected to nature you're looking for ways to feel joy and just confidence and freedom and camping can provide that to you um for us it was building for people of color who've been really underrepresented in the outdoor industry um so the our it was starting with what's our company what's our company about, right? At the end of the day, we're about diversifying the outdoors. But then as we built out our brand, it was making sure we are really speaking to someone on a much more personable and relatable level, as opposed to feeling like we need to sound like we're this big company, right? Um, and then um, the other piece is also having uh, people of color as outdoor educators, having um, reaching out to uh, organizations that focus on diversity outdoors and having collaborations early on. So, um, and in having those starting out deep, and that is really what's going, that's what's been re really resonating with folks, right? Because we're not talking about, sure, I can talk about like all the features, but my I'm starting out with the why. And then I'll tell you about, okay, here's, what the app is providing. And yes, we have offline um, access. And yes, we do have like a subscriber, uh, our subscribe subscription, which is the Trailblazer subscription, right? Uh, but I'm not starting out with the speeds and feeds. Like, uh, so I think that that is really what's made a difference. And every time I get feedback from folks who see what we're doing and why we're doing it, like that's what's um, continues to be part of how we build the brand and also the product. What what has been challenging about building the brand or product? Let's see. I would say for me, when I got the idea for Friday Outdoors, I was working full time. I had a very successful career in the tech industry. Um, I was also a new mom, and so having a little one, right? That that uh, it's not like there's a lot of excess time um, and so I think the hardest part for me was the vision and the impact that we want to make is so big uh, like to see a future where you go out camping and you're not the only person of color out there like that we're all comfortable just being outdoors it's huge what we're what we're doing and the heart but for me personally, it was how do I make sure I take action on this idea? Because it's easy to have an idea, but to actually mm -hmm. take action on it and start yeah. building. And so what I did early on is really carving out time to focus on building Friday Outdoors. And so that way, um, you know, I knew that I was going to be working on it after work, um, after my daughter went to sleep. Um, and then fortunately I have an amazing husband, um, uh, you know, there was time on the weekend where I have quality time with the family, but then I always carved out time to go work on Friday outdoors. And it's a very different approach to growing a business that, um, when you're balancing having a full-time job and needing to build it. So then I could at least build it enough to test, to see if it, if it had legs or not, like, could this be a bigger company? And then once I got that early traction, then I was able to say, let me go full time on this and have much more time to really do exactly what I think. But for me, it's been um, like, I would say a steady, gradual progression as opposed to great, I got the idea, I can go, you know, full time on this immediately. It was much more, I have the idea, let me build out gradually. 
Yeah, you know, that, that's a great point. You know, you, you mentioned you kind of went, eventually went full time. In fact, one of the things you, I believe you did was the REI co-op Embark Accelerator, if, if I uh, recall correctly. Um, so one, what was that moment where you said, okay, I can do this full time? And then two, I'd love to kind of hear your, um, your experience in that accelerator program. Yeah. So, um, early on, it was about a month after I got the idea. Um, I saw REI was having, um, their, it was literally the first time they were launching their, uh, accelerator program. It was for founders of color with early stage ideas. <laughs> and so, I mean, I couldn't think of a better fit. Um, uh, and so, uh, that was really helpful to also build out some kind of organization to building up gradually. Right. Um, I would also, uh, and going back to what you're saying, um, when I decided to go full time, it was after we had had our pilot summer, right? It was after we had, uh, built up, um, some momentum on search and social, and it was at a point where we're getting um, organic feedback. So like people are just, you know, on their own merit, reaching out and saying, hey, I am using your app. Um, you know, we've had people go to REI and they say, oh, I heard about your app. Uh, they went and used it and they went on their first camping trip, right? <laughs> and um, to me, getting feedback like that, I was like, okay, I know what I can do with this amount of time if I can do this full time, then I can definitely, you know, invest more in these areas of our product so that we can expand our curriculum as well as our features. Uh, and so that was the point that I said with these moments that I said, all right, this is the time while I had a successful career, I felt that my, I knew that my purpose uh, and my why had changed, had shifted to really getting people outdoors who wouldn't otherwise. And I made the decision there. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause, uh, I think sometimes the, the risk factor for a lot of folks, right. Is, is, uh, sometimes too grand of a, of a, of a cliff to jump off of sometimes. Now with that said, what advice would you give other entrepreneurs? Oh yeah. You know, since I'm, Earlier on in my journey, I will, I think my advice would be, um, chances are folks are, have an idea and it's really easy. I think the easiest part of entrepreneurship is having the idea, but then that taking the next steps and there's so many steps you can take before saying, I got to go all in. Right. And there's things that can help reduce the risk factor to jumping in. Right. Um, and so I really encourage entrepreneurs who are early on in their journey to you say, hey, I've got this idea. How do I test it out? Right. And it doesn't take a yeah. lot of money to test it. It's really free to go test your idea. Right. Um, you can go you can do interviews with folks. You can do surveys. You can um, reach out to Facebook groups who are in a similar interest and just ask for feedback, um, assuming they permit that. Right. Uh, in, right in those right. groups. Um, you can go to events that are related to that area. Uh, there's just a lot of things you can do that are kind of um, more grassroots. And I think that that helps get feedback to see, all right, is this a good idea? And by good, I mean, do people want it? Do people need it? Um, and are they willing to buy it, right? Because at the end of the day, as a business, you do need to make money. And that's, really what I think can, if you can get that validation early on, then it's just going to be that much more affirming that you're onto something. And then you can move through the next stages that I think you can read about in books and uh, uh, right business school teaches you, but it's that early on having the idea, testing it out. And once you know, you're ready to act on it, like then laying out that, uh, that blueprint and that roadmap for you is, uh, is absolutely essential. Um, and just remembering that there's a lot of companies out there like that we all use. They did not do it overnight though. Um, I love like, hearing companies' journeys early on um, and all the things that they did that weren't scalable, 
but like early on so they could figure out what was going to be that differentiator. And then once they figured that out, then it's like, okay, let me go and do more of that. But that, like you gave those examples earlier, uh, chances are the idea from the get-go isn't going to be how it actually then manifests uh, later on. It's, there's going to be some iterations. And so just being open to that in that process, I think, is really helpful uh, to folks. And um, once you get that, then then uh, go for it. Go, you know, make the jump, right? Because if you're, if thing is, if you're, how do I say this? Um, if you can get that validation then there i think you'll just know when that when that moment that decision needs to come up and i think it will be different for for each person right um i'm not like a trust fund baby or like got like millions or something in the bank account right so for me it was also a saving um along the way um i didn't know what it was for but saving a little so I would also have something to invest myself because if I'm asking others to also, I've done a lot of pitch competitions, but it's like I've given just as much as um, I've been able to receive in uh, grants and whatnot. So um, I think testing it out and then putting, what I say, put your money where your mouth is. And that can be in time. It can be a money. It can be an effort. Uh, but I think you'll thank yourself. What is that one thing you know now that you wish you would have known when you started your entrepreneurial journey or when you started this company in particular? Oh, uh, let's see. I would say it's a little bit more in the logistics of things. Like there's a lot coming from a corporate environment. I had the benefit of having um, operations uh, in place already, right? Like I wasn't setting up uh, how to get, uh, how to set up the website or how to set up uh, a, a company, right? Like, are you an LLC? Are you an S Corp or C Corp? Like, uh, oh, like bookkeeping. There's all these uh, foundations of a business that are so helpful to put in place early on. And so um, I think, in hindsight, um, I would have made, I would, uh, I wish I had uh, learned more about resources available so I could get those in place because it's like, okay, we're a year later, let me get those in place now. But honestly, uh, you gotta, it's just a total learning, especially as a first time founder. So I'm totally fine that I'm learning it as I go, but I definitely, uh, think I would have started uh, just building up some practices even early on because it just e gets easier to build out these habits, right? Yeah, certainly. And now what's what's the goal? What's the, you know, five, 10 year goal for, uh, for the, for the app? Woo. Well, I tell you, uh, we're all, we are so focused on getting more folks out there, people of color, camping, um, and like I'm talking, I want everyone just feeling like they can go out because if you know you can be out and feel that joy, confidence, and freedom that I talked about earlier, if you can feel it outdoors, like you can feel it anywhere. And so I do know from my own experience, as I built up that relationship with the outdoors, it really has like spillover benefits and how I show up to showed up to my work. It's how I show up with more energy for family time. It's just has so many benefits to every aspect of my life. And so for me, it's about helping more people find that. And um, from a business aspect, uh, it, we definitely can be the ones who help people who didn't see themselves going out there to actually be like, oh, maybe camping is for me. Like maybe I am yeah, like this, totally. this outdoorsy person, right? Um, so that's, that's what we're building towards. Um, and I have so much respect for other outdoor companies who have, you know, started in their 10 years into their business and seeing how they've reached millions of folks. Right. And I definitely um, am doing a lot of the work now early on to really build us to be a sustainable 
kind of growing company uh, that makes a difference in people's lives and just gets pe gets people out the outdoors and feeling confident. So that's what we're building up towards. I love it. Now, what if folks want to learn more about you or interest connecting with you, want to learn more about the Freddy Outdoors, how do they do that? Where do they, where do they find you on the website? Yes. Uh, so Friday Outdoors, it's our website and definitely encourage you to go there. Um, we're also on the socials, right? Um, Instagram um, at Friday Outdoors. And um, also, I think if it's more like the professional, uh, you're starting out a business, then uh, probably LinkedIn is also good. I've connected with people there. Um, it always helps to have other like found, I call it founder friends who are also know what it's like to start building a business early on and just support each other in that way. So yeah, I think those are the ways. I love it. So folks, again, that's Friday Outdoors. That's F-R-I-D-I-E, not to be confused with Friday, the day of the week, uh, then outdoors.com. You can also find this information on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter, a nice little quick shameless plug to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, you'll find a lot of great information, a lot of local community stuff, as well as uh, weekly newsletters. Wow. This has been really great because, I again, I, I like camping, as I mentioned. In fact, uh, I think when I remember when Princess Diana passed away because I was camping at a KOA campground and that's how I saw it on a TV. And I will remember that day forever. I'll remember exactly where I was. It was unfortunately one of the days you kind of don't want to remember, but yeah, I was camping. I remember I was camping. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And I'll be sure to let you know when we uh, have our curriculum out about uh, cooking over a camp. Oh yes, please do. We, we have created some mean, some mean steak. Uh, so let yeah. me and Linda, and if a book comes out, let me know. I'll be happy to put it on the newsletter and, and tell people about it here on the podcast. Again, folks, Lestea Malloy, the CEO and founder of Friday Outdoors. Uh, again, this is a camping app, so I would highly recommend it. And it is, it's, it's available on Apple and Android, correct? So it's on both Apple and Android. Uh, so please go download it, please show us support, and really just utilize it as much as possible. Lestea, thank you so much for your time. Those folks that are listening, thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.